Welcome back to another week of Eye of the Storm, a Guelph Storm podcast with myself, Ryan Drury, the voice of the Guelph Storm on Rogers TV. And I'm very pleased to be joined by another member of the roster this year, one of the newer faces of the Guelph Storm in his rookie season, and now the proud owner of his first OHL goal as well. Pleasure to welcome on Will McFadden. Will, how are you, my friend? Pretty good. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate you doing this. Well, how's the experience been, man? Your rookie season in the OHL, you're playing really well. You're getting a lot of ice time and, of course, scored that first goal. We'll talk about that in a minute. But how's the overall experience been so far? Yeah, it's been amazing uh, moving down to Guelph and just, you know, familiarizing myself with the team and the coaching staff and learning uh, how to play the systems. It's just it's it's been a really fun experience. What's it been like, you know, going from obviously playing U16 hockey last year, and we'll touch on that too because you had a fantastic last year of U16, but what's that jump been like? Has there been anything really surprising in terms of the amount of detail? Is there a big difference there between the jump from U16 to the OHL that you've seen? Yeah, definitely just the time and space you have with the puck. It takes, uh, well, for me, it's taken a lot of video and uh, help from the coaching staff and just watching different players on our team uh, play with like not as much space and time as I've, I've been used to in U16. So I think that's the biggest jump so far. Have you had kind of a, a wow, I'm in the OHL moment so far? And, and if you have, what was maybe the first couple where you said, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm in the best junior league in the world? Uh, I don't think I've had my moment so far, but, uh, like I've got hit pretty hard a few times, which, uh, just kind of welcomed me to the league, I guess. But, uh, yeah, not really so far. You know what? I'm not surprised by that answer, Will, because one thing that's really impressed me about your game so far is that obviously you were drafted with a really high offensive ceiling. Again, you had a great last year of U16, but the thing that's really impressed Mark Perry and I up in the booth about you is that you haven't been out there fishing for points. You've been going out there and just doing what the coaches tell you, putting your nose down, working hard. Uh, you're killing penalties, which is a rarity for a rookie. Like we're really impressed with how well-rounded your game's been you seem like nothing bugs you out there like where's that come from yeah my uh coach um throughout my whole minor hockey has been the same Mike Frugia he just got a the assistant job over in Oshawa um he uh he's been really keen on systems and uh kind of just familiarizing with stuff that'll be at the next level and uh knowing how to play a well-rounded game not just focus on offense and he really made sure that uh, that I knew how to play a well-rounded game, not just like my offense, but he made sure I was really good on defense also so that when I make the jump to the next level, um, it will be easier for me to kind of penalty kill and uh, be trusted in the defensive, uh, like when you have to kill penalty or when you have to take a defensive draw or know your responsibilities in the defensive zone. Well, it really shows, like I said, I mean, Chad Wiseman's trusting you out there on the penalty kill and you're playing a, t a ton of center, which is your natural position, which sometimes you see kids your age and you see it in the NHL level too. They'll shift guys that play center and make them play wing, but not you. You've been right there playing your natural position this whole time. How's that feel to have that level of confidence from your coaching staff already? And speaking of the coaches, how's your relationship been so far with Chad? Yeah, uh, knowing that the coaches have um, a good amount of confidence in me really helps my game and kind of my decision making because I know uh, they'll have my back no matter what kind of decision I make. And uh, yeah, my relationship with all all of our coaches are pretty good. They're amazing coaches. They know their stuff, and I just like being able to learn. Obviously, you know, you, you get drafted over the summer and I'm sure it was an exciting moment for you and your family when you found out that you were coming to the Guelph Storm. What was that moment like? Yeah, I was very, very excited. Um, still to this day, I can't really remember the whole day. It's just very overwhelming, very exciting um, to kind of just start the new, uh, like in my journey, the new uh the new opportunity and I'm um, very happy to, for it to be Guelph because it's just a great organization with a, a lot of great players on the team. 
Well, Guelph's been happy to have you. And like I said, you've been playing really well. Everybody's been really endeared to the way that you play the game. Let's talk a little bit about where you grew up. Obviously, you're a Peterborough native. I'm sure you attended a lot of Pete's games and saw some really great players come through there. What was it like growing up in Peterborough and playing minor hockey there? Because when you talk about junior hockey meccas, if you will, Peterborough's certainly one of those. The Pete's are a legendary organization. What was it like for you to grow up there and play your minor hockey there? Yeah, um, just always looking up to the the big Pete's, we used to call them. Uh, it's it's good come from that. Um, from the OMHA, I really liked uh, small town. You know, basically, you know, you grow up with the same guys. You play the same, like, play the same team. Your whole, your whole, like, minor hockey career, like, basically, ten or eleven of the guys I played when I was six that I played with my minor or my minor midget year. So, yeah, I really, it's a big part of my background for sure. What was it like growing up, obviously, learning the game? I'm sure that you can think back to a lot of people that influenced your love of the game. I'm sure your parents helped with that. Who are some people that really inspired you to chase hockey as a career at this type of level? Yeah, my father, for sure. He was, uh, he's been pushed me to, he was pushing me to play hockey for, since I was a little kid. When I was like three and I just learned how to walk, my dad put pizza boxes on my feet to kind of, make them kind of me feel like I'm on the ice and uh yeah I was pushing around the chair all day in the rink or going on the outdoor rink at my cousin's house so I'd definitely say my dad um for the hockey part and just wanting to do really good at what I what I'm doing I would say my cousin Tristan Jones he's not a hockey player anymore but uh he was a hockey player he wore number 12 which I wore in minor hockey but now he's transitioned into a triathlete he's uh hoping to make uh the olympic jump soon and he's kind of he's been my inspiration to uh work hard at whatever i do and he kind of showed me from a kid in a small town in peterborough that you can you can do a lot of good things if you put your mind to it that's amazing man well if he has the same type of engine that you do i have no doubt that we'll be seeing him in an olympic games in no time so pass on our well wishes to him Obviously, you know, when you grow up, you, you get to watch guys and being in Peterborough, like I said, I'm sure you saw a lot of great players come through town and I'm sure you looked up to a lot of different NHL guys too. Who are some guys that you watched when you were a kid that you really thought, Hey, I, I'd really like to try and play like that guy. Are there a few people that come to mind? Yeah. My favorite um, player to watch as a kid was Daniel Alfredson. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, Sens legend. I always, cause my favorite team's the uh, Ottawa centers. So, uh, I always grew up watching him, like Jason Spezza, those guys on the on the same team, and I kind of model my game after him. He's hardworking, goal scorer, but playmaker, and he's really good on the other side of the puck. So that's that's probably the guy I watched most of my childhood and tried to model my game after. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Is Jason Spezza OHL legend too? So yeah. not a bad guy to try and model your game after for sure. Let's talk about it. Obviously, your your last year in U sixteen for the U sixteen Pete's, you went off, man. You had an <laughs> unbelievable year. Thirty six games, eighty two points, an even split right down the middle. Forty one snipes, forty one apples. Talk about well rounded. What do you remember about that year? Because man, it went real well for you. Yeah, it was a really fun year. Um, we had a lot of. Uh... A really good coach is John Drews. He played uh, Washington. I remember Drewsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came. He came into our bench for the minor midget year. He shared a lot of experience with that with me, and uh, yeah, um, just nothing but awesome memories from that team. Yeah, well, it worked out really well for you, and obviously, it was a big part in getting you drafted. Now let's talk about a really big moment for you in a series of big moments over the last couple of years, playing so well in U16, getting drafted. And then of course comes the first OHL goal. Mississauga Steelheads, you're down there for the school game that they host. Take us through the goal and what the emotions were like when you realized I got one. Yeah. Um, very excited. Just monkey off my back relief. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, honestly, just, I was uh, really excited, uh, happy to finally see one go in. I've had a lot of chances and no luck so far, but uh, yeah, it was a really good memory. And to top it off, Vilmer scores the overtime winner, which uh, 
would keep it a good memory in my books. Yeah, for sure. You want you want it to be a win when you score, and and yeah. you got to have that. What's you know you bring up Vilmer, and you know I'm I'm curious. You know the rest of the guys. I've I've had a few of your teammates on already this year, and everybody's just raving about how close the room is and how tight knit the group is as a rookie coming in. I mean, it's really important to feel like you're part of the group right away. Is that a similar thing that you could echo how tight knit that dressing room seems to be, man? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it doesn't feel like a difference whether a 16 year old or a 20 year old, they're all, we're all really close. Uh, and we get uh, a 16 year old was get invited out to go for dinner with the boys and, yeah, they're just really close, and we know we have each other's back. So, you know, your leadership core, we we bumped into him last night in his first intermission interview. It's probably pretty special to not only walk into a really tight-knit room, but walk into a room with a leader like Braden Bowman. He has just been such a hard worker. I actually see a lot of, of you in the way that he's kind of played out his OHL career. Such a hardworking kid. Pretty special captain to have, eh? Yeah, yeah. You see someone uh, show up every day working that hard. It's just contagious. You want to work just as hard for him because, you know, uh, every day he shows up, he puts in the work and on the ice during games, he'll he'll do whatever it takes to win. It's just, yeah, it's contagious. You want to you want to have his back and get the win for him. Well, I want to ask you about some of the tools that help you get your work done out there. Do you have any weird equipment superstitions, anything, a routine that you like, a certain way to tape your stick, lucky skates? Is is there something that sticks out? <laughs> um, People say it's weird. I like the sock tape job from toe to heel all the way. Um, I get some hay for that, but uh, no, I wouldn't say anything mm. too weird with what I do. Um, just... Yeah, I just try to stay loose before the games and go and have fun. Obviously, as an offensively talented kid who's obviously got a great shot, 41 goals, like I said, last year with the U16 Peets, I'm interested about the stick, man. What kind of twig are you rocking? What's the curve? Like, it, has it been the same type of thing you've used a majority of your career? Have you switched it up a little bit? What's your What's your current weapon of choice, Will? Yeah, I use the jet speed. Uh I'm at 65 flex right now, so it's still an intermediate stick. Um, I used a P29 uh, curve. And, yeah, there's nothing too special. I I like to do some kind of odd with the top of my stick. I do uh, 12 wraps around, then 7, then 7 again, which comes out to 21, I think, hopefully. <laughs> there no. you go. Yeah, but, yeah, I just – uh i've been doing that i've been doing the wraps around my top of my stick for a while now and yeah that that's basically it. i don't have anything too uh too weird with my stick well you're not a goalie so i don't expect any weird stuff to to be going on too much uh they're they're interesting characters i want to ask you a little bit too just about the team this year and how well you guys have played so far i mean you know, the, the team got off to a really slow start last year and then had a tear down the stretch. But this year, the team came flying out of the gates, really great special teams. It's a fun group to watch. You guys are fun to cover, man. Uh, you know, how do you feel so far about how the season's gone? Yeah, I think it's gone pretty good. Um, we had a really good weekend uh, last weekend, I think it was. And, um, yeah, we're hoping to keep that going for sure. Um, we had a great start. A few rough patches, but that'll happen during the season, long season. And yeah, we're just hoping to uh, keep going, getting some wins and just playing good hockey. You've gotten your first taste, uh, a double dose so far. You'll get a third one this coming weekend of the Battle of Highway 7, the, the Kitchener <laughs> Rangers rivalry. It's a pretty special one in the OHL schedule. What's that been like? It's It's pretty intense, eh? Yeah, it's a fun atmosphere. The first game, eight five, it was a really up and down, up and down game. Emotions were high, but um, you know that's those are the best games, the rivalry games, uh, the games where you want it that much more. You put that much more effort out there because you know they're rivals. You know they want it just as bad over there. So yeah, I really like the rivalry. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. 8-6 comeback win for you guys in the first round. Kitchener on their teddy bear night uh, gets a 5-2 win. We'll see how round three goes. I know everybody's excited about that. 
Uh, talk to me a little bit about, you know, the city itself, you know, what, what in your mind in your early experiences so far makes Guelph such a special place to play and, and to live as a young guy. Yeah. I would say the community, uh, the fans, uh, every single game it's close to sold out, if not sold out. And, uh, yeah, I think we have one of the better fan group in uh, all of the OHL. And I would say that's, uh, that's the thing that stood out for me so far. Yeah, the fans in the Royal City are pretty special, and they've been enjoying a lot of great hockey so far this year. I want to ask you a little bit, too, just about some of your your entertainment preferences. I'm sure if, if you've seen any of these, I, I like to kind of pick your teammates' brains. You know, if, if you've got control of the iPod in the dressing room, what would you maybe be throwing on music-wise? I've, I, I've heard a lot of country. It seems to be a big country room, okay? Are you in that boat as well, Will? Yeah, I'd say I'm in that room, but uh, I feel like I'd give the iPod over to Searles. Uh, okay. He likes to get the music going in the in the morning for us uh, to school. Uh, he has a good. He likes the Zach Bryan, uh, Morgan Wall, and that type of stuff. But yeah, uh, I trust him with my music. Okay, well, you're a rookie on the team. You're one of the more impressionable guys. I'm gonna convert you into a metal fan. Okay, I got to get one of you guys on my team. All right, all right. Well, on that note, then, if if you could pick a goal song, a custom goal song, a lot of NHL teams are doing it for guys. If you could pick a custom goal song, what would it be? Um, I would probably say God's Country. Nice. Yeah, I'll get the it. fans I, going. Yeah, I think it's a good high, high beat song and. Still going down that country, uh, country lines, but uh, yeah, I'd say God's country. Nice, that's a good pick, man. Some guys have had to really consider it, and you you had to pick right away. You you've yeah. thought about this, I think. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that might Obviously, homework. Yes, absolutely. That's good. I like to see it. Obviously, you know, long long bus trips at times in the OHL. Are you a big like Netflix or streamer guy? Do you like to throw a show on? And if so, is there are there any particular shows that you're you're a big fan of? Um, I haven't watched a show yet on the bus. Me and uh Snowgrove usually uh just talk talk a while for uh the full trip. But uh, if I had to, I'd probably put Brooklyn Nine Nine on. Uh, probably watch it like four or five times. But big fan of that show. I like that. Hey, I I love it. I've had people tell me before that I look like Andy Samberg. I I'm not sure that I'm on that train. I'm I'm not sure. Maybe if I turn to the side. But I love Brooklyn Nine Nine. That's a good. It's a good. It's a good kickback and relax show, man. I, yeah, I like that pick. Good. There you go. Good stuff, man. Well, I, I'm also curious. Um, I, I want to ask you. I've been asking a couple of your teammates this because I've heard these rumors. You're a younger guy. I'm sure you're still maybe playing EA Sports NHL every now and again. Okay, so I've heard that Bonesy's the best at it on the team. Can you confirm this? Uh, I haven't really played with any of the boys, but that's what the talk in the room is. So I'll have to agree with that one. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, you got to yeah. challenge him then. Are are you good? Do you, would you consider yourself a pretty good shell player? Yeah, I would say I'm pretty good. I like to play here and there. Um, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Are you, are you generally like sticking with your Ottawa senators or do you like to mix it up and use other teams? Uh, back in the. Back in like 2017, 18, I liked the Capitals with uh, they were pretty stacked back then. <laughs> Let's go um, with Kuznetsov, Backstrom, Ovechkin, huge line right there. But uh, that was my team back then for NHL games. But uh, yeah, I'd have to stick with Ottawa. They're looking like a young core right now. They're got some good NHL cards, and yeah. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Yeah, you get a couple breakaways with Timmy Stutzla and you're away to the races, right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, yeah, I, I'm curious. I, I wonder if we can't put something together where we get a bunch of the guys together and have a big Chell tournament because I, <laughs> I keep hearing Bones, he's the best. But then, I, then I've heard that Michael Bushinger's pretty good. You think you're pretty good. I, I think we need to maybe put something together with the guys and, and yeah, figure this really... out once and for all. I don't think I'd put myself in the top top few for sure. Uh, I've heard we've got a pretty a few good uh, Chell players on the team for sure. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. I uh, I wonder as well. You know, I've I've talked to uh, your teammates. I've all asked them to to do this, and this is kind of how I like to wrap the show up. If you could put yourself in a dream lineup, a dream starting six, so a goalie, two D, and a couple wingers to play with you, of course, at center. 
Build me a dream lineup. Doesn't necessarily have to be NHL guys. Could be anybody, former teammates, yourself at center. Give me your dream starting lineup, Will. Uh, I'd have to go Daniel Alfredson on, I think, the right wing I'd put him on. Yes. Um, Left wing. I'm going to move Jack Hughes over to the left wing. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, Left D, Phillips from the old Ottawa days. Oh, wow. The bruiser. Okay. I like that. Chris yeah. Phillips. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to go... Kale McCarr, I'd have to put him, get the offense rolling over there. That's right. Got, got to shut down D on the other side. And goalie, um, I would have to go the Hamburglar. Wow, Andrew Hammond. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was quite a sure. run he went on. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, what was that? Twenty-one Oops. games undefeated. He didn't lose in regulation. That was uh, yeah. If yeah. you could get him in that little heater pocket, that'd be a pretty <laughs> darn good team, man. Yeah, for sure. I love it. Good stuff. Well, Will, like I said, you've been playing great. It's been a pleasure to watch the start of your OHL career. Congrats on the first one. I know it'll be the first of many. And keep uh, keep your nose down on the grindstone, man. You're working hard out there. You're impressing the coaches, and you're impressing us as well. Thanks for doing this, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Remember, you can find this show on the Guelph Storm website. You can also find it on YouTube. Just search Eye of the Storm, a Guelph Storm podcast. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple. And remember, if you want to come watch Will McFadden and his Guelph Storm teammates, you can get tickets on the Guelph Storm website or at the box office at Mm -hmm. the Sleeman Center. I'm Ryan Drury. We'll be back next week with more Eye of the Storm.